Welcome to the 52 Week Garden. I'm Paul and I'm going to take you on a quick tour here of our blueberry patch and our blackberry patch. Look at all these blueberries. The bushes are just loaded down. If you look, they're just, they're all loaded down. You can see blueberries on all these bushes here. They're just huge clusters of them. All of the bushes just loaded, loaded, loaded with blueberries. They'll be ripening up over the next week or so here and getting much larger too. You can see some of the really nice ones here. That blueberry there is as big as the end of my thumb. Really nice ones. So, have to add some sulfur and some acidic fertilizer to the soil each season. And of course, one of the other key things to blueberries, these are high bush blueberries, as opposed to the ones that grow sprawling on the ground. These stand upright and they get up to six feet tall. I'm six foot tall and there's one that's as high as my head. Blueberries actually are native to normally like riverbanks where the soil is slightly acid and they like to have damp soil all the time. They despise drying out. So I've got an irrigation system here. I've got them heavily mulched. You can see the hills of mulch. And there is a soaker hose woven in an S pattern back and forth between these bushes and they're on a timer. They get watered for about 10 minutes in the morning and again for about 10 minutes in the evening. That way they never dry out. Um, if they get dried out, they start dying back. They really don't like dry feet. Um, like I said, they're native to riverbanks in their wild form. And um, these high bush type can get uh, quite large berries and one of the big deals that you also have to remember is you prune these after they fruit. Uh, you need to force new growth because the old growth will die out and the new growth is what produces the fruit the following year. So you always want to prune these back. As soon as they're done fruiting, cut them back by about a third. Thinning branches out and cutting branches back by about a third forces a whole bunch of new growth and then you have a whole lot more berries next year. So these are our high bush blueberries, our little windmill there. We're going to go over here and take a look at the blackberries. Now these are thornless Navajo and Apache or the uh, type that you could order that cultivar if you wanted to out of uh, plant catalogs. And they are a thornless blackberry. These blackberries get as big as the end of my thumb and bigger. and they are heavy producers. They produce a whole lot of fruit. Now they're what they call upright canes, but you still have to have some trellis wires to kind of help hold them up because the canes are really only semi-erect. They kind of flop over. They get six, seven feet tall. They're also easy to propagate to create new blueberry, blackberry bushes. You just take a cane, lay part of it on the ground, scratch the bottom of the bark a little bit, lay it to where it's in direct contact with the soil, and I just lay a brick or a stone on it to keep it down. And then they will uh, produce roots. You can cut it loose and then replant that somewhere else and you get free new blackberry plants. But you can see we've got three rows of blackberries. They're growing and blooming to beat the band. You can see all the baby blackberries here they'll get quite large. They get uh, bigger than the end of my thumb, juicy, sweet, and tangy like blackberries should be. And like I said, these are heavy producers. Just look at all the blackberries here. They are loaded down. The great thing is if you've ever gone to pick blackberries, they literally eat you alive. They're covered in thorns, sharp thorns. These are completely thornless. You can just rake your hand through them. You don't get hurt at all. No thorns whatsoever. And like I said, they are heavy, heavy producers. Um, now the fertilization process for these is some 10-10-10 in the spring and again some 10-10-10 um, after July. These berries will start ripening the end of June by the 4th of July. They're hitting full stride. By the 3rd or 4th week in July, the majority of the crop is in and ripe. And They'll still kind of sporadically put out some flowers and berries up until uh, 
I don't know, up until about the, the end of July, first week of August, then they kind of just peter out for the rest of the year. That's the time when you prune these back. You wanna cut the old canes back down to the ground and force it to put new canes up. The canes that are kind of orange looking, I don't know if you can see them there, the canes that are kind of orange looking in there. See them right there, the orange looking canes. The burgundy canes are young. The orange canes are the oldest ones, and then the brown canes are in between. What you want to do is cut all the orange ones back to the ground, and the uh, burgundy ones, the green is, is the youngest, the burgundy is, is a year old, and the orange is two years old. You want to cut all those orange canes all the way out to the ground or back to the base stem. Uh, the green ones, you, uh, you want to cut them back to the burgundy, and uh, what that does is it forces it to put new canes up out of the ground, because these old canes, when they get the second year, they actually die. They'll literally die. And if you don't force the plant to produce new canes by cutting back, then the plant will die. It'll just produce, produce, and then die out. So it is uh, a little bit of work. You have to get out here uh, at the end of July, 1st of August, cut, these, cut all the old orange cane out, and cut all of the green canes back to the burgundy to force new growth on those and to force uh, new canes to come up from the base. And again, you feed them then. So you feed them in the spring, a little 10-10-10. You feed them uh, in uh, the, the height of summer, around the first or second week of August when you cut these back. You feed them again to encourage a lot of new growth and cane production. And then you'll have plenty of berries the following year again. So that's how you handle these. A uh, little information on how to do your uh, high bush blueberries and how to do your uh, thornless blackberries. Um, southeast coastal Georgia is where I'm at. Uh, the blueberries and the blackberries uh, really thrive here. Uh, but the blueberries that I'm growing actually come from a company called DeGrand Champs, and they're up north. Uh, they're up in Michigan, actually. So these blueberries, these high bush blueberries, actually come from the state of Michigan, uh, a company that's a big blueberry producer, and they produce several hybrids of uh, high bush blueberries. Uh, these are, uh, I don't remember the names of these, but they have three varieties that are specially uh, hybridized for southern growers. Uh, they grow them up in Michigan and then sell them to uh, growers and producers in the south. Uh, these uh, bloom at the right time for the southeast and uh, they're heavy, heavy producers and, and don't mind the heat and humidity down here. Um, so they're well suited for our area and I can't recommend the Grand Champs enough. I bought many bushes from them. Um, I get my fertilizer and plant food for the blueberries from them and my blueberries really thrive. So there you go. There's a little tour of the blueberry and blackberry patch in the 52-week garden and a little information if you're interested in trying to grow them. So enjoy your yard, enjoy your garden, and get out there and get growing. See you on the next one.